in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Baruch's Plea for Mercy and Redemption Prayer of Baruch Baruch 3 1 7 Lord Almighty, God of Israel, the soul in anguish and the wearied spirit cry out to you. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy, for we have sinned before you. You sit enthroned forever, but we are perishing forever. Lord Almighty, God of Israel, hear now the prayers of the dead of Israel, of the children of those who sinned before you, who did not heed the voice of their God, so that calamities have clung to us. Do not remember the iniquities of our ancestors, but in this crisis remember your power and your name. For you are the Lord our God, and we will praise you, O Lord. For you have delivered us from death and rescued us from the grave, and now we are in exile, far from home. Hear our cry, O Lord, and forgive us our sins, as we turn our hearts back to you. A Reflection Baruch's plea for mercy and redemption is a heartfelt prayer of repentance, one that reflects the sorrow of a people who have faced calamity due to their disobedience but now seek God's mercy and deliverance. In this passage, the prophet Baruch calls out to God on behalf of the people of Israel, acknowledging both their sins and the sins of their ancestors that have led to their present condition of suffering and exile. The prayer begins with a cry from a place of anguish. The use of words like soul in anguish and wearied spirit paints a vivid picture of the emotional and spiritual exhaustion felt by a people who have endured much but still turn to God for mercy. They acknowledge that their plight is directly related to their sinfulness, but they appeal to God's eternal sovereignty as the foundation of their hope, even in the face of perishing. Baruch calls upon God to hear the prayers not just of the living, but even of the dead of Israel, the generations that have passed but whose sins have left a legacy of suffering. The prayer acknowledges the continuity of sin across generations, but shifts focus toward God's enduring power and the possibility of redemption. The petition for God not to remember the iniquities of their ancestors is not an attempt to evade responsibility, but a plea for God's mercy to transcend the weight of historical sin. Baruch reminds God, and the people themselves, of God's identity and power, invoking his ability to rescue and deliver, as he has done in the past. The exile is acknowledged as a just consequence of their collective disobedience, but the prayer is hopeful, rooted in the belief that God's mercy can reverse their current state. The reflection invites us to think about our own need for repentance, not only for our personal failings but also for the broader sins of our communities, nations, and histories. It challenges us to recognize that sin can have lasting consequences, but it also encourages us to remember that God's mercy is always available. Baruch's prayer teaches us that even in our most anguished moments, we can turn back to God, trusting in His power to forgive and redeem. The ultimate plea is one of restoration, restoration of relationship with God and restoration of hope and life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.